day. Just let me check my streams while everybody joins us. See how we're doing? Looking good over here. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Let me check Facebook. Oh, very good. We're in our happy place, aren't we? Okay. I was going to wait until talking with James True on Friday to um, discuss this, but I think it felt right to do it now because everything these days is so timely, haven't you noticed? Uh, welcome everyone. If you're interested in my bio, you can go to my websites, yumnaturals.com and healingwithdmso.com. Okay, my name is Amanda Vollmer. Yeah, and hi, and welcome. You know, have you ever been in a situation where you were around someone and they made fun of you or mocked you, but it was so subtle, you weren't sure they were doing it until later you realized that they were making fun of you. Have you ever had that experience, especially if you were a child, when you were a child? Have you ever had an experience where you were dealing with someone who's passive aggressive and experiencing microabuse. Microabuse, it's sort of like you you don't know. You're kind of confused. Am I being abused? Am I not being abused? And it's only until later, maybe even years later, when you realize that it was abuse, that you are being mistreated. Have you ever um, been in a situation where somebody um, gives to you many things, very giving to you, and showers you with gifts, and seems like they're a very good person and they're very giving to you, and, and you're overwhelmed sometimes even at how giving they are to you, and you assume they're genuine, only later to find out that they weren't really giving to you purely from their hearts, their heart, but they were giving to you to manipulate you, to later use you, to own you, so that you would do what they wanted you to do. Have you ever had that experience before? Have you ever been in a situation that was maybe dangerous and maybe you were traveling and, uh, hi James, yes, invisible bleeding. James True is, is in the chat. Invisible bleeding, exactly. So say, say you were traveling. I've had this experience when I traveled to Cuba. I didn't know what I was getting into. And I was a big, I was a, had this big orange backpack on traveling through Havana by myself as a woman, which was dangerous when I was doing it, but I didn't know until I got there and I realized I was in danger. But somebody, a very nice gentleman, came to my rescue. He came up to me and said, you look distressed. Can I be of service? And because I was scared, I said, yes, yes. Can you help me? He said, sure, yes. Follow me and I will help you. And I was so grateful. I was so relieved that someone was going to help me. And um, so I followed him. And of course, I couldn't speak the language because I was always a free spirit and I just went wherever I wanted to go to, wherever my spirit wanted to take me. And I landed in a situation that was dangerous. Okay. Have you ever had experiences like that before? Have you ever been friends with someone and they just adored you and they always wanted to know everything about you? They always wanted to ask very personal questions and find out all about you and, and you were so enamored by it because you were like, wow, they really want to know about me. They really want to learn about who I am. I'm amazed at that. Nobody asks me questions like that. And you were so taken by the love bombing that you gave away all the secrets of yourself. Only to realize later 
that they were using the secrets against you to destroy you because they were jealous of you, because they hated you, any, anything malicious, or just to take energy away from you and go to the cycle of abuse, okay? So, obviously I'm, a, I'm, I'm explaining levels of narcissism here, and I've done this before where I compare narcissists as um, on the micro to the macro as our system, the way our system is set up. And you you may have heard me discuss that on Paula Gloria's radio station before. You may have heard me talk about it in different other videos that I've done. But why I'm talking about it right now is because social media has been data mining us for a very long time. Okay. And I know you know, I know you, you know that places that we post on will take that information and study it and do things with it. So what if, bear with me, so what if there was a worldwide psychological experiment that they wanted to place upon the people? What if? Never happened before in history. I'm just totally being hypothetical here, of course. So what if they wanted to do that? Okay. And what if they really wanted to push the timeline in this experiment as long as possible? And they wanted to see what the slaves did when they were under huge amounts of pressure for long periods of time. They would play around with microabuse. They would treat the people as children by um, removing something that they really wanted and then giving it back to them to manipulate them into wanting it, like their jobs or their livelihoods, right? They would use the information that they data mined from, from us, from you, to make stories go viral. What would happen is after a while, you would get a lot of people going, hmm, you know what? Something's not adding up here. Something is, smells a little off. This, this is not okay with me anymore. I'm, I'm gonna do more research into this. I'm gonna look into this a little bit more. And then you find out that the whole thing is a game. And you try to tell other people that it's a game. And more and more people are finding out that it's not real. So, for those people who have an idea that something's not quite right and that body of people is growing, how would you manipulate those people? What would you do? Well, say you were trying to make the public like doctors again. Say you were noticing that a lot of people were very mad at doctors. They'd been trying to make you clap at doctors and, and show appreciation at them, you know, every Thursday by honking and clapping for them. They really tried to make you like them better by pretending that they were saving all of humanity. However, those individuals were making too many TikTok videos and they kind of blew it. They kind of blew it, especially for the group that was seeing right through the shenanigans. Say what they were going into hospitals and realizing there was nobody in there and that they weren't actually doing anything different than they normally did and that they were still accepting the praise and recognition of the people without speaking out. You'd have a different opinion of them. Hmm. Now, say those same people, you wanted to encourage them to get a vaccine. You needed them to do that for all kinds of reasons that we don't even need to get into right now. But say that group was really starting to question the safety of those vaccines. They weren't really into it and frankly, it's totally unnecessary. But how would you convince those people to start to like doctors again? How would you try to make a story 
go so viral that you either divided that group of, of individuals that was waking up or you shifted them into going, wow, I was wrong. Doctors are actually good. They are trying to save lives. They do really care about us. I'm going to start clapping for them. How would you manipulate people to do that? Well, one way that you would do that is you would use a media organization, as James True has exposed, run by Steve Bannon. When Breitbart died, Steve Bannon took over Breitbart. You would have a Breitbart story come out, run by Q, right? Steve Bannon being Q. And you would have the story say, look, we have a cure for this terrible, terrible thing going on already. And it's really cheap and it's really simple. And it's being suppressed because look, all these doctors, all these doctors in their white coats have come up, come up together and said, enough, we care about you. We know that this special, special drug will save people and from this scary disease. And we've had enough. We want this drug. We demand this drug. And we care about what's going on. Okay, so say they did that. And all of a sudden, the news started to pick up and the story started to spread. Now, what would you do if that story it was spreading, but it wasn't really that big? Well, you would use your social experiment to take away the candy. You would censor the living crap out of it. All those people who are so awake that know what's going on would say, see, see, it must be the truth. It must be the truth because they're censoring it everywhere. These doctors are just trying to do good job. They're good doctors. There are some good doctors. It is a salvageable industry after all. And we're going to share it so hard and so much and so virally that it's going to get everywhere because they want to shut us up and we're not going to let them. And that's exactly what happened. It's a top trending story. Are you tired of being abused yet? Are you tired of being used and abused and put into outrageous sensation? Because that is a perfect example of being used and micro abused to spread something that is, as James Drew so eloquently says, salacious. It's sensational. It's outrageous. Every, my entire feed was full of this story. Everybody sent me this story. See, they're trying to take it down. It's true. Are we ready to step away from the narcissist? That's the question I have for you today. What else could be in this experiment? What else could be part of an experiment in a group of individuals that refuse to take a vaccine because they already know that it's poison? Well, if there was a safe and effective treatment that was cheap with very few side effects, that's easy, maybe they could be convinced into taking that instead. Now, what do you think about this individual here? This is Madonna. Madonna on Tuesday posted a video with misinformation about COVID-19 and hydroxychloroquine, writing, uh, sorry, writing on Instagram that a vaccine for the virus had been developed but was being, being withheld to let the rich get richer. The truth will set us free, but some people don't want to hear the truth. 
Instagram flagged her post for false information and noted there was no cure for coronavirus. The post was later removed. The viral video also retweeted by President Donald Trump before its deletion by Twitter. <gasps> Outrageous! How dare they! Featured controversial Houston physician Dr. Stella Emanuel claiming she had treated hundreds of patients with hydroxychloroquine and prevented death. It prevented death! Stella Emanuel claiming she had treated hundreds of patients and prevented death. She's a hero. She's a hero! Doctors are good. And she said masks were not necessary. Just what we want someone to say. Masks aren't necessary. They took away our jobs and our livelihood, and then they said, you can have your jobs and your livelihood if you wear a mask. We take away the candy, and we'll give it back to you if you do what we say, because you're little children. Madonna said, uh-oh, we're not going to get the vaccine, but we have this hydroxychloroquine. Give it to us. We want it. Trump says it's good, too. You see how it works? Are we having an ascension moment together here today? I really hope so. It's a really good website. And I will share it with you. And it talks about how hydroxychloroquine is a Trojan horse, a schism of trust. It talks about the dangers. It talks about the issues. And it talks about how really what we're seeing here is a setup for the ones who still believe there's a virus because they haven't quite gotten there yet, have they? Haven't quite gotten there yet. Have they? They haven't quite arrived. It's too easy. They're so angry about masks and hydro what's it that they still haven't even considered the possibility that it does the virus doesn't exist. And Dr. Stefan Lanka. I call on biochemists, bio, biologists, virologists, and cell culture specialists to carry out these control experiments. The results will end the con the corona crisis immediately. Making it a little too easy for them, aren't we? Somebody asked me today, because there's supposed to be a discussion between Shiva, the destroyer, and Fauci, what to ask, what should be the poignant question? I said, if they're not talking about the falsity of the germ theory, then it's just part of the game. It's part of the drama. It's part of the division and the sensationalism. And I'm not interested otherwise. That's the only thing that we need to be talking about right now. Hmm? Outrageous. This is a problem. Chloroquine and nanoparticle drug delivery, a promising combination. In this study, mice models received injections of chloroquine, followed by an injection of nanoparticles. Chloroquine decreased the macrophage's ability to clean up the nanoparticles. The findings are significant because the nanoparticles not only remained in circulation, but also accumulated in mouse tumors, as well as in the lungs of healthy mice, suggesting that the approach also may enhance treatment for lung diseases. Because <laughs> they don't know how to treat the lung. They have no clue about health. Iatrogenic medicine is the leading cause of death. I know you're going to say, but Amanda, it's the third leading cause of death. Heart disease and cancer are the top two. But that's not actually correct. Because if you break down how the top two have died, the top two have died from the drugs and the treatment by the MDs. So the MDs are the leading cause of death across the world. They are not your heroes and they are not your saviors. They are deeply programmed to believe that they are heroes. They are deeply programmed to believe that drugs save lives. They are deeply 
brainwashed into a cult. And they believe what they say, just like a narcissist believes what they say when they are talking with the mask on to others outside of their immediate family that makes them look like heroes to other people because they're so loving and generous and giving to everybody else except their family members whom they destroy and abuse, all thinking they're helping them, all thinking they're doing it for their benefit. These people are not heroes. These people are actually abused and that's why they're abusers. I will leave you links so that you can understand that there's a problem with this particular drug, that it's not safe. It's Plaquenil. It actually causes psychosis in people. I will read some of the side effects for you. Plaquenil, which is this miracle anti-malarial drug, affects the central nervous system. It causes EMF sensitivity, electromagnetic field sensitivity, sensitivity to sunlight because of the EMF sensitivity, light sensitivity, seizures, convulsions, seeing halos around lights, loss of balance or coordination, easy bruising, confusion, uncontrolled movement, ringing in your ears, nervousness, irritability, skin rash, itching, hair loss, diarrhea, dizziness, stomach pain, vomiting, headache, on and on. You can easily go look up your side effects. They're everywhere. You will have as the uh, severe or rare side effects. Okay, there's there are certain severe ones that it will actually detach the retina of the eye and damage the cornea of the eye. It damages the kidneys quite severely. It can lead to acute liver failure, anemia, because it damages the blood and leads to a clotting disorder, interestingly enough. It calls, uh, causes angioedema. It, it causes necrolysis, epidermal necrolysis, which basically causes blistering and peeling of the skin. It can cause Stevens-Johnson syndrome. It can cause peripheral motor neuropathy. That's the uh, peripheral nerves that enable movement. It damages them. All types of hearing loss, heart failure, low blood sugar, low blood counts due to bone marrow failure. Low levels of a type of white blood cell uh, called neutrophils, so dumps your neutrophils. Basically, it completely obliterates the functional immune system. can lead to muscle wasting, muscle weakness, porf porphyria, so it's a discoloration in the tissues. Um, heart disease, basically prolonged QT interval on an EKG. Seizures, skin rash with sloughing, suicidal behavior. Our suicidal behavior is already at an alarming high rate, and you good doctors want to give a drug that cre increases suicidal ideation as a touted miracle drug against a, vi a virus that doesn't exist. How dare they? Delirium. Nightmares. Weight loss. That's probably the only good one. <laughs> I could go on. Are we smart enough? Are we mature enough? Do we care about ourselves enough? Do we love ourselves enough? Do we believe in ourselves enough? Can we empower ourselves enough to see the game being played before us? It's a very perfect example of manipulation, of knowing who we are, and pushing our buttons and seeing how many of us fall for it just because they have censored it. They censored Madonna. They censored the President of the United States. Outrageous. It's sensationalism. It gets you hooked. It's a dopamine feed. Can we stop with the addictions? Are we strong enough? Can we stop having it pull our energy away, drain us, bleed us out? This is the question, okay? Can we say, no, no thank you? Can we finally 
divorce the narcissist after 35 years, 40 years of being with the narcissist? Have we been socking money away privately and secretly, waiting for the moment that we can leave? Have we been designing our exit plan so that we can be free of the constant death by a thousand cuts? Hmm? It doesn't matter if he, if Madonna's a he or she, or Michael Obama's a he or she, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. They're all feeds. They're all pulls on us. It doesn't matter what they are, who they are. They are nothing. We are becoming prime manifestors. We are the ones with the power, and we are the ones that create our reality. And when we figure this out, we get more of the keys unlocked inside of us to do just that. So can we become adults spiritually and see right through the games before it even touches us? Because I'll tell you, I saw that one immediately and I'm very happy that I did. As soon as you have such a sensational story there's a Nigerian woman raging, sweating, passionate. She's putting all her energy into that show, into that acting that she did. Have you looked at her profile and what she does? These are people who believe vaccines save lives, that give vaccines to our children, not my children, <laughs> not my child, <laughs> but our children. These are people who poison people for a living and think they're doing a good job. These are people who make fun of natural medicine and call it quackery, even though they don't know a thing about it. Why are we promoting doctors as heroes? They've tricked the truth community to do that. Can you see that? It is a low budget movie, it is. And the more you start to see it like that, the easier it becomes. The more you learn the tricks of the narcissist, you see it a mile away. A narcissist can never impact my life again directly because I've learned so much from all those lessons, all those experiences. Why do we attract narcissists in the first place? Because we don't have self-worth enough to see. We're looking for something outside of ourselves to make us feel happy and satisfied and peaceful and loved. We're seeking. And what comes to fill the empty space inside of you? The narcissist. To show you that it is your own energy that fills you up from, in, from inside. It's nobody else's job to do that. And that's maturity. And only when you do that for yourself will you truly attract the love of your life, the friend that you've always wanted, any relationship situation, because the mirror will be true. The mirror will come back to you reflected as whole, rather than as feeling like you're missing something and you need it to come to fill you up. So we thank the narcissists, we appreciate the challenges, and we're passing our tests mile by mile as we go. We're getting better and better at it every day, aren't we now? Because really there is no enemy, right? When there is no enemy within, the enemies outside cannot hurt you. There is no enemy outside of you. Any enemy that you think is outside of you is because you've created it inside of you. So who has the power here? Who really has the power here? You do. You do. Okay? There is no enemy. What is prayer? Prayer is manifestation. 
The moment you pray for something, it actually exists. What I mean is prayer is not a energy for the future. Prayer is an understanding that you're a manifester and you can make that happen immediately. It already exists. We're just remembering that it exists. And we're getting there. We are getting there. And I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud because I see you getting it. I see you cluing in. I see you walking away from giving it your precious energy, energy that you could spend on inner work so that you can pull together your beautiful, powerful tribe, so that you can manifest the life you've always wanted, so that you can pull together abundance into your field, so that you have enough to really share with other people genuinely because you genuinely want to see them well and you give from your heart with no need for anything to come back toward you. In fact, you could give anonymously because you don't even need for them to know it was you. That's where we need to get to. So we thank all the fakers, the micro abusers, the narcissists for their service toward our ever-expanding awakening. And as much as I may seem to contradict myself, <laughs> meaning that on the one hand, I appreciate the lessons, and on the other hand, I can sometimes get angry at the liars. But I am a very vast human being, and I can have all those things within me at any given time. It's not one and it's not the other. And we have to understand that we are paradoxical beings. And we are human beings. And we are having a very powerful experience here. And we are going through a massive and very quick level of ascension right now. So time to pull up your socks and get to work. All you need to be sharing is the core truth. I know people will argue and they'll say, oh, but it's a stepping stone for people. It's important for them to realize that, you know, not all doc you know, some doctors are waking up and they're going to change things. It's just not how it works. If, a, if an MD wakes up, they leave the system. The system will not sustain them. Their license will be removed or they will walk away from that situation. They will lose their vocation. They will lose their payday. The system is not going to change. We are going to change. And the system will become obsolete because we will not be servicing it any longer. We'll say, oh, that's nice that you think that you're such heroes other than some emergency medicine, which we'll keep. Thank you. Please stop drugging people. Please learn about vitamin C. I don't hear a lot of doctors coming together with passion, talking about how vitamin C infusion that apparently was used in Wuhan can help COVID patients which we have evidence of for those people who had respiratory disorder, which isn't COVID, but they had respiratory disease and the vitamin C infusion completely healed them. I don't hear that. I hear them talking about drugs, a drug that can make you suicidal, a drug that interestingly enough can make you more sensitive to attack from nanoparticles that happen to be sprayed upon us in the sky on an almost daily basis, or that make us sensitive to a system, an electromagnetic system that is being put up so rapidly across this earth, it is alarming, and especially quickly being put up in children's playgrounds across America and Europe. Do you see the game? I really hope you do. I pray that you do. Oh, I prayed that you do, so you do. <laughs> See what I did there. So we're not fighting. We're not harming. 
we're standing up for ourselves and we're saying to the narcissist, no, thank you. You are vacuous and you have nothing to offer me that is real. You are an illusion. Bye bye. I'm freeing myself from my chains. And guess what freedom is? What is freedom? It's letting go. True freedom is letting go. And we are letting go of the stories and the saga and the drama. Yeah. So we can talk about all kinds of remedies and I will get back to that discussion, but not in this particular video because I'd like to keep it short tonight. All right. I'd like to keep it brief because I have problems with that. <laughs> And I'm learning. I'm always learning. And I hope you are too. And plus, I'm into a very exciting book tonight, and I would like to read it. Because when I present things to you, I obviously come with knowledge, but not just my internal intuition, which I do bring, but I also do a lot of research and I do a lot of reading. Actual books that are paper. <laughs> So I'm reading George W. Carey front to back right now because I've been waiting to do that ever since writing my book. I have not had a chance to really read it. I've only been picking up chapters and, and reading it here and there and then pondering that throughout the day. So I haven't had a good chance to go through it all and already it's uh, very important. So I'm ready for that now. If you feel um, ill, it's only going to be two things. You are toxic and or you are nutritionally deficient. That's it. So you can immediately increase your nutrition and decrease your toxicity. And that is the way to health. No suppressive drug that stops a symptom will ever heal you. You may suppress that symptom for a given period of time. You may even suppress that symptom for years. But what happens is because you've stopped a normal, healthy, natural bodily expression, which is called a symptom, and called it a magic show of a cure, you may not, unless it comes back in the same way, and if you are, you're lucky, but if you continue to suppress it, it will go into deeper organ systems. And when it goes into deeper organ systems, it looks like a new symptom, but it's the same problem deeper. And these MDs that we think are so heroic, they have no clue how to figure that out, and they're the cause of that. And eventually, maybe takes years, maybe even 20 years, that person's life is shortened by that behavior. So we don't suppress symptoms, we express them. Just like we don't suppress emotions, we properly express them. Because if we lock things inside of us, they become energy drains on our life force and they become malignant. And eventually they come out as an expression that could be explosive, harmful, or damaging to yourself or to others. This is why we don't use drugs. Yes, we have a situation where electromagnetic fields are ever more present in our reality. And if we do not generate enzymes, enzyme systems fast enough to deal with that, or we don't protect ourselves in other ways, that can cause a whole bunch of symptoms. And you can look those up by looking up ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation to see all the studies done on that that show that it does do harm to the physical being.
We are electrical, mag uh, we have electromagnetic fields ourselves. It impacts our fields. It can cause all sorts of uh, symptoms of the body trying to correct that. It can cause ringing in the ears, dizziness, loss of balance, all kinds of symptoms. And it also can challenge the body in such a way that it causes inflammation. It triggers white blood cell activity. And it can lead to production of certain types of particles that our body makes in response to tissue injury. And if you knew that, you could design a test to look for that. And it just so happens that that happens across the board for all kinds of stressors, not just electromagnetic stressors. Could be the death of a loved one that leads to that particular particle being made. Could be the ingestion of certain type of chemicals or toxins. Could be adrenal fatigue that leads to that situation. Could be heart disease. Could be any type of lung disorder. Could be pneumonia that causes those particles to be formed to specifically heal that tissue that's being damaged. And then all you need to do is find the common denominator in humans or animals or pawpaws or motor oil or whatever. But anyway, a common denominator of DNA that is easy to find, easy to magnify, and you can so, so easily fake a test and call it something fresh and new. And then you have poor brainwashed doctors that really are blind. They can't even see the disease before them as the same as other diseases. They have to look at paperwork in order to see the patient before them. They are blind to their eyeballs, their third eye blind, and they can only use tests and labs to know anything. It's very unfortunate. When you study the human body, like I'm doing with George W. Carey's books, this is all about the body, um, you can look at someone and you can ask them questions and you can find out exactly the organ that's involved and what's going on with it and then how to repair it. That's what I've been doing to help people for close to, I don't even know now, where am I at? 13 or 14 years successfully. I don't need labs. I don't need expensive tests to do that work. But they do because they're blind. That's why they're really good at making up all kinds of new disease names and specialists, make work projects. Because it's so complicated, you could never figure it out because you're too stupid. We're smart. We wear white coats. We're initiated into this group that knows better than you do. No, it's not true. Healing is easy. Know thyself. That's the challenge before you. Look within yourself now. Turn off the television. Don't fall for sensation. Is it sensational? Do you feel when you read the piece of news article? Do you want to go, that's outrageous? If you want to go say, that's outrageous, don't go there. That's the test. My whole feed was, I really almost did it. That's outrageous. <laughs> that's outrageous. That, that's what I wanted to keep doing all the way down because pretty much every one of them was doing that. And every one of them I put to sleep for 30 days as well. Because I'll come back in 30 days and see if they've spiritually matured. And if they haven't, then it's time to find new friends. Yeah. Finding your tribe. Finding the people who are with you on this journey and who are going to support you through the times that are coming. Because if we don't keep passing the tests, the tests get more outrageous. So we'll be watching outrage from a distance while other people are going through it. And I do a video like this to see if I can assist as many as I can so that they too can leave off the outrageous 
drama and do the inner work and pick it up a few notches. And that is my hope for you. Just looking quickly at um, some comments and then I'm going to go back to my book. I have, um, there are a lot of videos done on these topics already. I, I might, but you know I'm just going to say it doesn't exist, <laughs> none of it. <laughs> I know you want to wake up your loved ones. The way to wake up your loved ones is to be present with them and to hold the truth inside of you in their presence and ask them questions. Don't tell them. There's nothing to tell them. You know how I started the video? What if? What if? Let's just say they're children, so treat it like they're children. Let's play a game. What if you wanted to do, wanted to hoax a nation? How would you do it? How hard would it be? Hmm? Play with it like they're children, because they are. I, you love them, you want to wake them up, right? So ask them questions as king, asking as a king, ask them questions. See if you can get them thinking. The only way you can help someone get out of a cult is to help them think because they're not thinking. So that's the best service that I suggest for those of you who are concerned about their loved ones being caught inside the sensationalist continual cycle. So, thank you for joining me. You may find my bio at healingwithdmso.com, yumnaturals.com, and very, very soon with my blog articles, finally back up and active as uh, yummy.doctor. My name is Amanda Vollmer, and I hope you have a beautiful night. Why don't you go?